What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny For Real. My God, it's been a minute. I have just landed here in Chicago a couple hours ago, got a nap, and I'm ready to talk about basketball. While I was in L.A., a lot of stuff happened in the NBA. And though I'm not talking about it all in today's video, expect something tomorrow than a day after because I got a lot to catch up on, all right? Today I want to talk about my favorite team, the Chicago Bulls, uh, the most active team during the trade deadline and pull off a trade, two first-round picks, Wendell Carter, Otto Porter Jr. for Nikola Vucevic. Bulls fans, we on cloud nine. We got another all-star for Zach Levine. Playoff push, playoff push. And since that moment, <laughs> it ain't been great. Um, we have been bad. I think seven and – or the three and seven in the last ten – and not even just losing games, we have lost some abysmal, abysmal games. Teams that we should not have lost to. The other day, I'm sitting in my hotel room. I should be working. I should be doing research for this next interview. And instead, I'm like, the Bulls play against the Magic. My boy Wendell Carter can, you know, not revenge game, but I like to see Wendell Carter um, be successful. He goes against my Bulls. But I'm still in the back of my mind, like, it's, it's the Orlando Magic, right? We don't, really, we don't really have to worry about them beating us, right? I'm uh, wrong. Um, not only did they beat us, they basically destroyed us and made us look like an inferior team. And at the end of the day, um, we are. On paper, we have a, a competent roster. On paper, we have two all-stars. We have a, a team that should be better than the 10th seed and not even just the 10th. Like, in a couple days, we're going to be the 11th seed and potentially <laughs> the 12th seed. Um, we're, we're better on paper, but if you watch the Bulls, you know that this team is very, very far from being a good team. Very, very far from being a competent team. Very, very far from being a competitive team. Bro, this team has little to no heart. And it, it sucks to say because I have a, a relationship with the Bulls. I have a relationship with the players that are on the Bulls. But as a collective, I'm not calling out a singular player. As a collective, when you see them lose to the Orlando Magic, you can't help but to watch that and be like, bro, where's the energy? Where's the heart? Where's the aggress aggressiveness? They lack that heavily. Heavily. So in today's episode, we want to talk about whether or not that trade, two first-round picks, uh, two first-round picks, what else? Wendell Carter and Otto Porter Jr., was it worth it? Was it worth it? Is there regret in this trade? Because I've been getting that a lot of my mentions. Because as being a guy that is very vocal about his Bulls fandom, I be catching strays when people talking trash about the Bulls. I don't work for them, y'all. I'm not on the roster. I can't make them better. I'm just actively rooting for them as I should as a fan so I be catching strays in the mentions like man Kenny y'all are bad and I'm like y'all when did I anyway um I still do believe that the trade for Nikola Vucevic is a good trade um and I said it in in real time a lot of people on Twitter are like the Orlando Magic got fleece got fleece and if you go back and watch that video of my trade deadline, I'm telling y'all like no they did not they got very good value for a 30-year-old aging center. They got very good value. But also, on the other side, the Bulls got good value, too, with, with getting another all-star caliber player. Those, yes, this is a trade that this should have propelled us into the playoffs. It hasn't. And most likely, it won't. I'm looking at 538 right here. We have a 6% chance of making the playoffs. And if I'm not mistaken, right after the trade deadline, Nick Vucevic gets traded to the team. We are like a 20% chance. So, um, it has dropped significantly as we continue to pack on these L's. But I've I tried to tell people this. This was not a win now, make the playoffs, or bust move. At, le at least in my opinion. Ak, AK, he is making the foundation for what he believes can be a good, competent roster for, I guess, the now in the future. I guess he failed on the now part, but also the future. There was, very, there was a lot of rumors going around about Ak and them being very active outside of, I think they made three total trades. They wanted to make more because they knew that we aren't good. You have to remember, this is a front office that took over a team over a, from a guy or a group of guys that fans had literal shirts that we were going to games with, sitting fire guard packs. Thinking about the recent draft history of guard Foreman and John Paxson hasn't been good. We had Kobe White last year. I, I'm still a believer that Kobe White's going to be a competent NBA player in this league. We had Wendell Carter, who again, another guy that I believe is going to be a competent NBA player. We had Laurie Marketing, who for everything that I've seen, everything I've read, he won't be on the roster next season. You know what I'm saying? So people ask it, Kenny, why don't the Bulls want Larry Marketing? If you watch him play, you know that he is super one-dimensional. If he is not making jump shots, he is not impacting the game uh, in, in an effective way that benefits the Chicago. But he's impacting the game for the other team. Um, so we got all of these trades. They 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 promised Chandler Hudson to be drafted in the first round. They ended up trading him away. So basically we have invested these picks for players that we don't even 
that don't even hold value to us for the now or the future. I'm waiting for the day. I'm waiting for the day where Lowe puts together that video. This is how the Bulls wasted 10 years of draft picks because I know it's coming because that's kind of what we have done. Um, we traded away one of our first round picks from, from the recent. That's the Wendell Carter. When Laurie Markin is going to hit restricted free agency and we're probably not going to match anything. Uh, Kobe White is still young, but I think I think. A lot of fans are are off on Kobe White, and I understand why, because these last couple weeks have been dreadful for him individually. But I honestly do believe he is playing out of position. He is not a point guard at all. And now with um, Zach Levine being down, they ain't even referenced that Zach Levine is out for about two weeks now. Um, Kobe White should have an opportunity to showcase that he, he plays the off guard not the on guard, you know what I'm saying? He's not a guy that I want bringing the ball up the court. So the acting them took over this team that was, well, we were down bad. And you know what? We still are down bad, but he has had one, one trade deadline to make things work. And if you look at on paper, a lot of the trades that he did make sense for for the future, right? Vucevic, he's a 30-year-old center, but there's nothing in Vucevic's game that showcased that when he's 31, 32, he'd be less effective. You know what I'm saying? It's not like he's super agile center that's dunking on people. He is a skill center, and those guys usually tend to last longer. And he doesn't have any 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 injury history either, like big injury history, which is a W. We, we bring in 21-year-old Troy Brown Jr. He's been one of the bright spots of the whole trade down line for us. That's a W of a trade. We bring in Daniel Tice. Now, that's one that you're like, eh, about. But when you think about what we gave up, we gave up Mo Wagner. To get Daniel Tice to be a potential guy to help us on this playoff push, and that playoff push is probably not going to happen. So I still believe that the, the deals that AK and, and Mark put together at trade deadline are going to be beneficial down the line. It's just right now it hurts to be a Bulls fan because you have players three. I want to say four because because I do I think that Thaddeus Young has been really impactful. Players four through 15 going out there and not playing with any heart, not playing with any care whatsoever. And eventually, those players won't be on this roster. We know that we have Vooch locked up for a couple years. We plan on re-signing Zach Levine. At least that's everything that I've, I've seen and I've read. Daddy Young's a little bit iffy because he has been so good this season. I could definitely see another team trying to take him away from us. But we have some core pieces that that can be beneficial for us. And what people fail to, for, for, to remember is the Bulls traded that pick away of this year's draft, but it is top four protected. You know what I'm saying? And as of right now, if I'm looking at the NBA standings, um, um, you, if the, w the way that the draft lottery works now, if you're going to jump up, you're jumping up to a top four spot. So I'm looking at this now. We have the Raptors, the Wizards, the Cavaliers, the Orlando Magic, and the Pistons. That is five teams beneath us out east. And if we're going by win percentage out west, um, if we're going by win percentage out west, it's three teams underneath that. Now, again, I'm saying that the Bulls are probably going to fall out of the 10th spot. So let's say we finish. If we even finish 12th, there's still five to six teams beneath us. So if we're giving up this pick, it's going to be like a, the seventh, eighth overall pick. With still a, a chance for us to get the lottery odds on our side. Listen, the, the, the perfect world, the perfect world, and this is not going to happen. But the perfect world for a Bulls fan, if we do happen to fall out of that push, because I am not of the opinion of, all right, guys, let's go tank to keep our pick. I still want to try to win games because some of these players will be there this season or next season. So, like, there's value to at least trying to be competent. You know what I'm saying? So, let's say we miss the playoffs. Jumping up in that lottery where we keep our pick and we get one of the top four picks to put alongside. Quit playing with us, bro. Quit playing with us. And, and one guy – that hasn't got a lot of criticism amongst Bulls fans is, is Billy Donovan. And I understand the reason why uh, he comes into a team that's not built for his style. And, I mean, you got to think about our front office and have had to have these conversations like, yeah, these first years or so may not be the greatest because we don't have the personnel to fit you directly. But outside of that, when you're looking at the personnel that we do have, some of the decisions that, that Billy Donovan has made over the last couple games – have been kind of mind-boggling for a guy that's watching every single game. Some of the rotations are very, very weird. Some of the times that he decides to call timeouts feels weird. Oh, the team is on a 12-0 run. Now I'll call a timeout instead of when they were on a 7-0 run or 8-0 run. Some of these things that as an outsider, as a fan of the game, I'm like, bro, we, we could be better than this. And I can't help but to watch his post-game interviews because there's I, I watch Bulls post-game interviews with my team. And to hear his answers to questions, it's like, bro, we could be way better than this. You know what I'm saying? I think he, he's, he's saying all the politically right things in these post-game interviews, but sometimes I want him to just be like, bro, we ass right now. You know what I'm saying? It ain't been great for us. I, I still look at these trades, and I'm like, bro, 
the Bulls can be in a good spot in a few years. And maybe that's blind optimism because it is my team. Um, but I do believe things could be in the right direction, even if we do miss the playoffs. Uh, the next week or two is one of the biggest of our, our whole season. Unfortunately, Zach Levine won't be there for it, but we go against the Cavs twice in this next week. We have very winnable games, and Cavs are one of those teams that's on our butt. The Cavs – um. Oh, I'm sorry. The Cavs are about three and a half games, but we have two teams on our butt, and that is the Washington Wizards and the Toronto Raptors. And though the Toronto Raptors have been up and down this season, we know personnel-wise, they're the better of these three teams. And I think they're I think they have an easy record, but the easiest record in the league as far as teams that are on the outside looking in, trying to make that push, is the Washington Wizards, bro. The Wizards might sneak in with Bradley Beal, Russell Westbrook, and, and some of the guys that the Bulls traded away. It would be very funny for us to try to bite now in the win. And then the team that kind of sold a little bit or re retooled on the fly ended up getting that playoff spot. So I don't know. There's a lot of rambling. There's no notes in these videos, but it is what it is. Um, I, I, like I said, every other day or every day I plan on dropping a video that is geared towards a team or a topic that is on my mind. Before we get out of here, um, April 20, 20 Eighth is the day where we're launching Called Game on this channel. This channel will be rebranded from Kenny For Real to Called Game with Kenny Beecham probably. Um, when I was just in L.A., we had four amazing interviews, which was beautiful, former NBA players coming onto the show. One of them is, like, the best episode ever, and I cannot wait for y'all to see that. So if you're around on this channel, just don't be surprised if a video pops into your feed and it says Called Game instead of Kenny For Real um, because I got big things, man. Y'all know I've been working with some of these bigger companies, and I love working with, I don't want anybody to misinterpret what I'm saying. I love working with House of Highlights, but I love being an individual as well. Um, and this called game thing is solely independent, y'all. I did hire a production company, so I don't have to edit the damn thing. But this is a solely independent project, and um, I, I think it's going to be amazing. I think it's going to be amazing. So I appreciate your support. April 28th, and we'll talk more about it in future episodes, bro. I'll see y'all. Let me know what you think about the terrible, terrible bulls. See red, but it's, it's a lot of anger.